Welcome back to the Art Room, Mrs. Larrabee here. This week we're going to be looking at sculptures, this three-dimensional type of artwork. We're going to be using simple shapes to build our own sculptures. We'll have two different options of how we build them. Here's the supplies that you need. You'll need your scissors and if you have it, thin cardboard. I have a piece from a cereal box here. You could also use a piece from a paper bag. Anything that has a little weight to it, cardstock, construction paper, um, poster board. If you don't have any of those items, that's fine. Grab a sheet of notebook paper and I'll show you how we can use that in just a moment. Grab those supplies and we'll get started. I'm gonna take just a moment to introduce you to one of America's best known sculpture artists. His name is Alexander Calder. Mr. Calder was a mechanical engineer in the beginning of his career. So he worked on machines and movement, making things work. He moved into the art field pretty soon, pretty early in his life and became best known for things that he termed mobiles. These were pieces of artwork that hung or sat atop a base and they had movement to them, hence the name mobile. These were pieces that would oscillate and turn. Many times he would add a motor to them that would actually make them turn, but sometimes they're also turned by the wind or even by people touching them, it makes them turn. Mr. Calder used obviously his mechanical background to make this happen. Mr. Calder built some that were small on the tabletop kind of size. He built some that were huge that would cover the whole ceiling of a building. He built some that were outdoors that would move in the wind. And some of them he built indoors that would need this motor to help them move. Here's an example of one of his mobiles. This is called the spider. Mr. Calder also did things that didn't move. And the phrase that was used for that is a stable or something that was stationary. So this is the spider in mobile form with movement. Here is Mr. Calder's spider in stationary form or stable form. Both of these definitely, I can see the spider uh, just getting ready to move in both of these pieces of artwork. This piece of artwork is outside some buildings in Paris. It's obviously very tall, several stories tall. And we're gonna be doing something more in the form of a stable this time instead of a mobile. Ours may not have movement to them, but using these bold shapes, but these flat shapes, how they're put together makes it pretty fascinating. We're gonna be doing the same with our artwork today. There's two options. This first option will work best if you have some thin cardboard like the cereal box. The second option will work with any of the supplies. So well, let's get started. All right, so option one. Option one, I was just taking different shapes and playing with them. I started with circles and squares and I added some notches to them and I put them together and I bent them in different ways and I tried different colors. These were white and then I colored one side pink to see what it looked like when they had color in different parts of them. I did the same with squares. I kind of mixed them up, but my favorite was when I went with a shape more like this kind of a quadrilateral type shape. Here's how I went about making these shapes. So I obviously I traced something for the circle. I eyeballed, I just cut out as best I could these squares. Um, but for the rhombus, I just simply cut strips of cardboard. Try to keep them pretty similar in width. This will help when we start to build. And then I just started to cut angles into them. I tried to keep four sides on all of them, although a few times I did make triangles out of them just because I thought that would look cool on there too. So I tried to keep quadrilaterals on each of these, alternating the size, alternating the angle, and then the fun part begins. After you have your pieces, you get to start building. So think for a moment about what would be the best for your base. I'm gonna choose this one. And then I'm gonna pick up another piece and I'm gonna think where would I add it to my sculpture? Would I add it here, maybe on the top? See, I think I'm gonna add it here and simply create a notch, cut a notch in to hold your pieces together. Now, as you can see, they start to bend a little to the side. It doesn't hold it perfectly. We need a little engineering here, right, to help us. So what we can do is simply cut a notch on the other piece too, where they're gonna to meet together. This will help hold them a little more securely together. One of the things I'll point out is that Mr. Calder's artwork looks deceptively simple. He builds things out of these simple shapes with wire and pretty simple lines, but actually getting them to balance and stand and do the things that he wanted them to do, especially these mobiles that moved, required trial and error and a little bit of math. 
So I want you to just have a little patience with yourself if things aren't coming together the first time. Give it a few tries. Here's my challenge to you. Try to use a whole piece of cardboard for this or a whole piece, a whole panel of the cereal box to make this one work. See what you come up with. You can alternate which sides have the color on them and which sides are the plain brown. And yeah, see what you come up with. The more that you put on, the more stable your base will become too. I really like this one. I like how the angles turned out on it. You can always take it apart and try again if you're not happy with the results to begin with, right? All right, so there's a very simple version using shapes and notches to put it together. All right, for option two, we're gonna be cutting one shape out of a sheet of paper instead of a lot of little and bending it so that it has this three-dimensional sculptural form for us. So I'm gonna start, you could use cardboard, but I'm gonna start with the paper bag. If you're using notebook paper or something that's a little thinner, then you might wanna start with a smaller sheet. So you won't need very much paper. I would go, this is maybe about four inches by two inches. I would go with something like that and do a little miniature one and see if you can get it to stand up. And then you can start working bigger if you can. All right, so I'm using paper bag for this one. I'm gonna start just by simply folding it in half. You can even up any sides that you have that might need it. And then I want you to stop for a moment and think about where the fold line is. So where you folded your paper. It's gonna be very important to know where that is. We're gonna to start to cut the outside of our shape in first, but we wanna make sure that we don't accidentally cut our paper in half, okay? so. Think for a moment, this, uh, this guy is actually an arch shape, so we could do that. I'm gonna start at the bottom, and actually for this first one, I'm gonna cut all the way off the edge so that I can get the shape that I want for the outside of my sculpture. Okay, this time I'm gonna cut the same arch, but I'm gonna stop before I get to the fold line. So notice that I left some space right here. This way I don't end up with two separate sheets of paper. I want this to all stay together. As you go through, you can start to add some waves or some pattern to your cut lines. Just make sure that you stop before you cut it in half. All right. And then we can open it up. Let's see what we got. That looks kind of cool just on its own there. All right, we're gonna try to make this three-dimensional though, so we're gonna do that by folding. I'm gonna take every other one, I'm gonna fold this one forward, I'm gonna fold the next one backwards. Forwards and backwards. Notice that I'm kind of starting to make this three-dimensional shape here. And then I'll do the opposite on this side. So if I folded this one forwards, I'll start backwards and do the opposite as I go down. And let's see, this might be a little hard to see from there, but I'm starting to get this three-dimensional form and it's starting to stand on its own. Hopefully if you're using uh, the smaller miniature size paper, it's working for you too. You can start to see that sculpture is not just about the positive space or the paper, but it's about the negative space that you create as well or the space in between. All right, so you can have fun working on this. You could go back in and add some pattern on top if you would like. Um, you could cut in some different shapes as well. That could be kind of interesting just to add a little more of that positive and negative space around the edges. All right, so there's our option number two. This is with an arch. Let me show you one more thing. I'm gonna use uh, cardboard for this one. What if we did it in a different shape? So I folded a rectangle the first time. I'm gonna fold a triangle this time. If you have any of these edges, you can cut them off. This will just help to square up your paper. Okay, so now I have a triangle. I'm gonna cut some lines into this as well. Remember, we don't wanna cut off the edge of our paper, so I'm gonna stop right there. Here we have it again. And one more. All right. Kinda cool. We can bend this different directions, get a different look at it actually fold some of these. This cardboard's kind of cool because it lets you fold it, add some creases to it very nicely. If you want to make a stand so that it'll hold straight up and down, I just made a slit right here and I can bend this back and 
simply put tape on it to make a stand for our sculpture. We could even cut some of these sections, bend this forward, backwards. You can even give this one up here a little twist. Think about what it would look like from all the different angles. Whether you tried using separate shapes to build your own sculpture or whether you used one sheet of paper to bend a sculpture, I hope you created something surprising and unique today. This definitely requires different thought processes to think about something in the third dimension, to think about it from all different angles and to get it to stand sometimes. All right, I'll look forward to seeing you guys next week back here in the art room.